Hey everyone, it is me, TNT, and I'm back with another video, and this one is going to be really, really fun. It is actually a tutorial, um, and I think it's really, really cool. Uh, so basically, it's pretty simple. I actually got the idea from a different video um, that's set in real life, but this is, of course, in Minecraft, uh, and it works really, really well. It's basically just the staircase that loops forever, um, and you can go either way. You can even go back down if you really want to. Um, and yeah, I think that's just really cool and really simple, and I thought that I might as well do a tutorial on it. Uh, so yeah, I say let's just get right on into it. Now the way this works is actually really, really simple. Uh, the only problem is that it does use command blocks, so just keep that in mind, you will have to be in creative. Uh, but the commands are really, really easy, and I'll put them all in the description. You'll have to edit them a little bit just to put in the right coordinates, but it really should not be that hard. Uh, so basically... This works by teleporting the player, so if we go over here, you can see that my brother's account is standing right here, and as soon as I cross this line, uh, they disappear and my hand kind of glitches out for like a hot second. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of lag, like a little lag spike if you're running an old computer, or your computer is running two accounts at once, which is what's happening on mine. Um, but yeah, basically you can see that all of a sudden my brother disappears, uh, and that is because right here I am being teleported to a different part of the stairs. So when I'm down here and I cross this line, I'm actually being teleported back to the top so that way I can just walk from the top back down. Um, if I go the other way, then it just teleports me down. So it's actually really, really simple. Uh, the key is to get that seamless teleportation. But so far, as long as I've had my friends uh, press F1 before going into the staircase, they haven't actually noticed anything. Uh, so I say let's get on to actually building this thing. So it's pretty simple. You can do any stair design that you want. You could make this two blocks wide. You can make this one block wide. You can make this five blocks wide. Uh, you can change these blocks to whatever you want. Uh, the only thing that you're somewhat limited to, but not fully, is that you should have this walkway between the two stairs three bo blocks wide. Um, technically, you can have one block, but then things can get a little bit iffy, and sometimes they'll be able to see the trick to it. Because uh, if I come down here and I fly over, you can see that's just a dead end. And sometimes without three blocks in between, a uh, person can actually see the dead end. So it's probably not ideal deal to have it any smaller than three blocks but you can if you really want to uh, but you can ex make it like five blocks in between if you want to or any larger is totally fine now to make the staircase you need to make sure they have access to command blocks uh, and then you also just have to pick out basically whatever blocks you want to actually make this let me switch this to stone blocks instead of invested stone blocks that might be better like i was saying you can make this basically any design that you want feel free to make the ceiling taller do whatever you want. So you can really start wherever you want, but personally I'm going to start uh, where the person actually walks in to the staircase, which is over here. Uh, you can technically have them come from the roof or start over here. It really doesn't matter, but personally I just like to have like a nice basic entrance. And then I will be having three blocks in the middle between the staircase, uh, but I'm actually going to have the staircase be five blocks wide. Uh, because why not? I'm gonna make it look grand. So you really just want to make a starting platform and then from there you really just want to start making a staircase. It can be however you want it to look like. Uh, so personally I'm just gonna go for a very basic design. Um, I'll probably have some few soul lanterns on the ceiling and whatnot. Uh, nothing too fancy except for I guess uh, this block of netherite, but I'm in creative so I'm just gonna have fun. Now the only thing to keep in mind is that when you're placing in the stairs uh, you have to decide if you're going to be placing blocks uh, underneath it or not, and then keep it that way the whole time. Uh, because if you do not do that, then the stairs kind of, you can see light on them. And if you have that for one side but not for the other side, sometimes you can see a drastic change in the light, uh, which will just kind of take away that nice smooth effect. Uh, so just got to keep that in mind. Now personally, I'm actually going to keep my stairs very, very short. Uh, first of all, because I already made a staircase that's a little bit longer, but also I want to be able to see the platform uh, where the person arrives at when they get up here, uh, just because I want to see my friends sooner, you know, when they come around that corner. Uh, but yeah, you just have to make sure to leave a little bit of space for the extra little bit right there, that dead end. Uh, but besides that, you can basically do it from bedrock to sky limit. Uh, so yeah, just go basically however high you want to go. So once you have a staircase that's leading down and a staircase that's leading up, uh, you can also make the little platform that's going to be connecting them. Then what you want to do is you just want to basically copy this exactly, but just up here. So you can do the slash clone command if you're good at using it. Personally, I'm not good at using it. 
Um, but also, if you're just going to be building uh, it by hand, then you only have to do part of it if your staircase is super long, uh, just to the point where it will be out of sight. So for example, over here, I would only have to be going to that stair right there. Um, and then at that point it'd be out of view because I'm gonna cross the border right here. So if you have a little thicker staircase like I do, then you will be having to do a little bit more extra building. But if you just have the slash clone command perfectly mastered, then you can literally just clone it and it'll work just fine. Uh, but personally, I will be building it by hand. And then also just be sure to clone this right over here. So you can see I already have this part done. Uh, it's just basically an exact clone. I'll be doing the walls after I get the staircase all done. It's just easier to visualize it at first. Um, it's up to you if you want to start doing walls now, but I will be getting to that soon. Now, because my staircase is just so short, I'm actually going to be able to use um, this staircase above me as a roof, uh, which is quite nice. I'll have to make one over here, uh, but just saying that is an option if you'd like to do that. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to add in the walls now. If you're wondering if you've gone far enough to where you can just cap it off, just place a line of blocks on the edge of where the uh, dividing wall ends and just go to the very corner and see if you can still see the sky. Uh, in my case, I can, so I still have to continue and I'll probably have to loop it around because my staircase is just so short. And now that I cannot see the ending, I was able just to cap it off. Uh, and then, yeah, that part is now done, so now I just have to do the bottom part too. And I am now done with the bottom side too. I might l not look like I actually was able to do it, but really, uh, the wall would be turning there. <laughs> so once you have that and there's all capped off and you all have the staircase that is an actual staircase and you want to make it into not a staircase, uh, that's when command blocks come in. So to get the teleportation working, you want to do slash give at p command block and that'll just give you command block because you cannot find it in the creative inventory uh, that command will be in the description along with the ones that we're going to put inside the command blocks um, so what you want to do is basically come down or go up depending on which side you want to work on uh, and basically the side closest to the dead end you want to take that and you can mark it if you want uh, and as long as you just know where it is this is where line's going to be between teleporting and not being teleported. So if you go and you cross this line, you're going to be teleported to up there. So to check if a player is over in this area uh, without using any tripwires or anything, uh, basically what you want to do is you want to come out here, or you can go anywhere in the world basically, as long as the command blocks will be loaded in. I just find it easier to put it right outside. And basically you want to be able to find the coordinates of these blocks. To do that can be somewhat tricky, but it's not that hard. Uh, so you can either do F3 and you can stand on the block and you can kind of figure it out from there. Uh, the easier way for me personally is to do slash fill and then I just press tab three times and that will give me the exact coordinate very, very easily. Uh, and then from there I can just erase everything else or I can jot this down in a notebook. Uh, personally, I erase everything else. I press control A to highlight it and then control C to copy it. So now I have that coordinate just marked down in my clipboard. So from there I can go out here and I can just place a command block and then go into the description if you'd like, if not just copy what I'm gonna put in here. So just type in execute. I'm gonna be using tab by the way. Tab will just basically uh, go and autofill to the closest thing that you've typed in. So execute as at A and then you wanna do these brackets. Um, then you wanna do X equals and then you can just paste in the blocks coordinates and then just add 0.5 I actually made a mistake here so what you want to do is you actually want to add 0.5 as in like if you have a negative number such as negative 7 you want to add 0.5 to make that negative 6.5 uh, but if you have a positive number such as 4 and you add 0.5 it would be 4.5 and then just add a comma do y equals and then you can just paste it in again and take only the y coordinate this one you don't have to actually add any points and then you just add comma z equals and then you can just paste in that last number too and then for this one also just add 0.5 and then do comma distance equals two periods and then one and then just close the bracket but we're not quite done yet. After that, you want to do at, and then the at symbol, s, 
and then after that you just want to do run tp after that you just want to add three tilds with a space in the middle except for this middle one you want to change a little bit now the number is going to depend on how large your staircase is uh, but basically it's going to be the number of blocks it takes you to go to the next layer so for me it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i will be adding ten right after that tilled lastly what you want to do is change this from impulse to repeat and then need to redstone just change that to always active and you'll see after you've done that that once you come in this general area you have to find the correct spot but you'll eventually be teleported up to the next layer uh, it might be a harsh jump, but that's mainly because of lighting. Uh, once you get texturing and everything down and lighting down, it'll be nice and smooth. Uh, but that the problem is that it's not a line as of right now, it's just that one block. So what you want to do is actually you want to come over here, you want to do control and middle click on your mouse, and then basically that will copy the data from this command block over to this one. So you can see once I go into this one, it's set up exactly the same. Basically what you want to do from there is figure out which axis you're moving along uh, when you're walking towards the middle wall, uh, also between the like, also down and up the staircase. So for me I'm moving across the X axis, uh, which means that I'll be wanting to change that. And then you'll also be wanting to see if you're increasing that X axis or lowering it when you walk from the middle wall to the outer wall and for me I will be increasing it. So what you want to do is basically go to the next command block and just change that x-axis and increase it or decrease it depending on which one you're going to need for your situation. So for me I'm going to be increasing it and then I will be taking that command block so once again control middle click on the mouse placing it down and then just changing that number by one and then just do that for as many blocks as you have going in that direction. So we've already done this block, we've done this block, and we've done this block. I still have to do this block right here though. So I'm just going to take this command block, place it down, and I will be changing this number and I will be hiring it. So now you'll see that if we close this up and we walk over, you'll see that everything changes. Now what you want to do is come up to the other dead end and this time you'll be wanting to do this side of the blocks. So once again what you want to do is you just want to get the coordinate of this block right here. You can also start from this end uh, but then you just have to keep that in mind that when you're either hiring or lowering the block you just want to make sure you're going the correct way. Um, so I will be taking this block so I'll just use the slash fill command again and I will take that coordinate and then from there I will be going outside and I will actually be copying the same command block that I had down there, but I'll just be tweaking a few things. First of all, we want to change the Y by 10, because that's how high we're going up. Uh, but you just basically add this number, whatever it is for you. Uh, just change that. And then when it comes to the X and Z axis, we want to make sure they have the correct Z axis, because remember, instead of... Oops, you just want to make sure you have the right z-axis because remember at first we were over there now we're over here uh, so that's only a two blocks difference you just have to realize you just have to get which one that is uh, but for me i will literally just copy and paste that coordinate that i've already copied down uh, and then just add 0.5 because i'm lazy and i don't feel like figuring out which way i have to go <laughs> and then for the x-axis that will be uh, the same that will stay but the one thing uh, the one other thing that you want to change is over here where it teleports you by 10 blocks. So you should want to change that to negative 10. Uh, that way it will teleport you downwards, not upwards. From there we can just copy that block again, place it down, and change that one coordinate. Uh, now remember, if you do copy the uh, command blocks down there, you just have to make sure you get the correct X axis. So then once again I'll just copy that command block, I'll put in the correct coordinate, press OK, and I'll copy that one, put in the correct coordinate for the X axis, press done, and then just keep on doing that for as many blocks as I have. I believe that this is the last one for me. And then I'm pretty sure that's about it. So you still have to do the lighting and the texturing, but now you'll see that as you walk across, you'll automatically be teleported. So from here you'll already be walking in a circle, uh, but you still have to just make it, you know, a nice clean cut. Uh, so that way everything just looks correct. And if you really, really, really want to texture it, go for it. Uh, but it will be really, really hard. And I realize that, yeah, it's actually going to be a pain. Uh, if you have something like World Edit, 
where it makes copying and pasting things a lot easier when it comes to, like 3D stuff. So basically I could just copy this wall and then paste it where it needs to be pasted. Um, then that would make life a lot easier and, and you'll be able to texture the staircase really, really easily. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to be making everything nice and smooth. Uh, it's too much trouble. <laughs> Uh, but if you want to get to the dead end, all you need to do is get in creative mode and just fly over that boundary. Uh, you'll not be able to jump over it, but you just have to make, your make sure that your friend doesn't build up one block and then just jump it. Now when it comes to lighting, you shouldn't have any problems at all when, it, uh, when you start at the very beginning, uh, where there's no cuts or anything. Uh, so for me, I'm just going to be adding a few soul lanterns like that. Uh, but once you get down over here where there are a few cuts, uh, you'll see that once you start adding things, they'll of course be disappearing once you go over that line. Uh, so what you want to do is basically just find that spot, keep an eye on it, and then you just really want to just remake it. And it's that simple. Uh, so it's really not that hard to do, but it just takes a little bit of time to make sure that you get it just right. And there we go. Now keep in mind I am using Optifine, that's why it looks so weird. Uh, but then also, if you have something at the very beginning, like I have here, uh, you if it produces a lot of light in your dark area, and you're in a dark area, then sometimes you'll have to just kind of uh, remake it, which in my case would include remaking basically that whole hallway. Once again, it just depends on the length of your staircase. I'll just have to come up here and basically remake the beginning part. But after a few more extra minutes of work, you can see that there's a little bit of light shining and as soon as I cross that border, we're still at the very beginning. Uh, so basically, yeah, I just kind of fixed it and I just added that extra little bit and I added the lantern and everything looks great. Uh, so I'm also gonna add one over here and then probably on the staircase itself. I think that should look good. And here we go. Now it is just a continuous loop where you can do a number of things. You can A, just kind of have fun with your friends, freak them out maybe a little bit, and just kind of, you know, just make a little entrance and exit where they can come in, test it out, and then go out. Uh, or you could be a little bit more mean and basically have an entrance, have your friend go down the stairs, make it a decent staircase where you can just cover up the ed exit and then just you know maybe go into spectator mode and then just watch them run in circles <laughs> that's an option where they just don't even really know what's happening and they just keep on going around and around um, you can make this in a survival world and just go into creative and then just kind of have it sitting there and then just trick all your survival playing friends, but I think that's a really, really, really fun trick. Uh, I've had a ton of fun showing it to my friends, and a lot of them have been very, very freaked out and very confused, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so just a few things to make this effect look a little bit better. First of all, have them press F1 just so that when you cross that boundary, it's nice and smooth. You don't. Uh, sometimes you'll see your hand just kind of glitch, uh, sometimes you won't. Uh, but yeah, just keep that in mind that you might want to keep an eye on that. There we go, that's one. Um, so yeah, if you just press F1, that totally fixes that. Another thing is that if you have multiple people, you can see name tags. So to fix that, what I do is I do slash team, add, and then you can name the team whatever you want. For me, it's just typically a color, so we'll do blue. And then you do slash team, modify blue. And then where it says uh, name tag visibility, you just type that in and do never and then you can just do slash team join blue at a and that will just have everyone join the team uh, that's currently sitting in the server and then you'll n no one will be able to see anyone's name tags and that way when your friend comes down here he won't see your name tag just suddenly shoot up um, it'll just be nice and clean that being said you can just hold crouch uh, and that will fix that problem Another thing to be wary of is that once you cross this line, um, anything on that side of course will be invisible, such as players. So just make sure that only one person is coming at a time, because if they uh, cross and another person does it, all of a sudden that person's gone and they know that something weird just happened at this area. Uh, but besides that, it's pretty seamless, it's pretty flawless. But anyways, here are a few of my friends' reactions, just if any of you guys are curious. <laughs> yeah, go down the stairs. Whoa, wait, okay. Whoa, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Go up the stairs.
Go on. I'm, I'm up. Oh, keep going. There's keep more going. Stairs. Hello. Hello. Is it just gonna be like a never-ending type thing? Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is cool though. Hello. I'm trying to fit, let me figure out how this works. Come oh, back. No, no, Come back. Mind. Come back. What the? Look at me. Look at me. Go up. Go walk backwards. What the? Okay, how does that work? <laughs> because you're. Who's the one teleporting? What if we're both teleporting? I don't know. What? <laughs> all right, all right. So basically, what's going on? I'm so confused. What's going on is that it's basically just a seamless teleportation. Um, so the room that you're getting teleported to is looks literally exactly the same. So if we go back to the beginning, and I just bust through here and I give you game mode, you can so you can come out here and you can see. So how do you teleportation like that? That was what I'm curious about. It piece it basically takes a, your exact coordinate and then just adds ten uh, to your Y level, and that way, basically, oh, yeah. it seems like nothing right changed. Little, like, look, if I sprint up it, it there's like a yeah. Okay, wait. Yeah, so the reason I make you press F1 is because sometimes your hand glitches out just a little bit. Right. Yeah, so just to get rid of that, it's nicer to make yeah, them press F1. You can see it. Go up the stairs. Uh, uh, it's you. Hey, it's you guys. Cool. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Ready? Ready? Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Okay. Okay. Check it out, check it out. There's no other entrances. That's super cool. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was so much fun to make. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, be sure to make this for your friends and show it off and tell, freak them out. I don't know. Um, maybe trap them in here forever. Have a good time with it. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already or don't. Um, it's really a free choice. Kind of. Um, and yeah, before I go, I just want to mention Sticky Piston. Uh, they're really cool. Go check them out if you haven't already. Sticky Piston is a Minecraft server hosting company that offers amazing and powerful servers for a great price. Sticky Piston also has many different types of servers to choose from, such as vanilla, modded Minecraft, minigame maps, and more. They also have a great and easy way to control your server so you don't have to go through all these different web pages and whatnot. Um, it's also great for be beginners like myself at making your own server. Um, and if you do get confused with anything, uh, their customer support is great and they can help you with almost any problem that you could have. Uh, so there's a link in the description if you want to go check them out. And I highly suggest you should because I'm not, uh, they're not sponsoring me because like, they're like, oh, I want to sponsor you. No, I actually want them to sponsor me because I think, I believe, I really love their product and I think that they're doing a great job with it. Um, so yeah, definitely go check them out. 